Elhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu Ala Rasulihi Kureem Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam In my body With Allah's name The merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer All praises are due to Allah Rabbil Alameen The Lord Evolver Sustainer of all the worlds. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulihi kareem. Wassalatu, may the prayers, wassalamu, and the peace be upon Allah rasul, his messenger, kareem, his honorable, noble messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and all that follows. Dear believers, Muslim brothers and sisters, I greet you again. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, we are thankful to Allah the Most High, the Creator, the Nourisher, the Sustainer, the Mighty, the Wise, Azizul Hatim. We are thankful to Him for allowing us to assemble for the Juma, for the Juma, and we pray that Allah will guide us and protect us, increase us in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and accept our prayers, and make our hearts and our minds clean and pure, and our intentions honorable and noble. So it's so wonderful, and I thank Allah for blessing us to be together again as Muslims and believers. To fulfill our obligation and to be in each other's company. To be in each other's company. It's a wonderful and a beautiful thing. And it's a great blessing. Today, inshallah, we want to continue in our series of touching on each chapter of the Quran. And today, we're in Surah chapter 42, entitled Surah Tul Shura, Shura, Shura. And Shura uh, is called Shura Bainahum. Shura is consultation, to consult. Yes together to give the best opinions, consult with those of knowledge and good character, etc., uh, to help leaders and the community make decisions, good decisions, that are best for the community, to consult, to seek advice, wisdom, and it's called Shura Bainahum or mutual consultation, meaning those that you are consulting you know, together, they have a mutual interest and their opinions carry the same weight. They're to be respected as equal. So this Shura, Baina, Shura, 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 entitled Shura, consultation. Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu though he was the seal of the Prophet, seal of the Prophets, and he had revelation from Allah, he still would consult with his companions and others of trust and knowledge. And Islam is not to be a, a dictatorship, as we know. So this, this surah gets its name from, as with all of them, they get their name from something in, in that surah. So this one here, Ayat 38, it gets its name from Ayat 38. Where Allah says, those who hearken to their Lord, were ekimu salat, and who established salat, were emruhum, 
and who conduct their affairs, and, and affairs, their business, their command. Amrohum, surabainahum, wa mimma razaknahum yunfikum. To first hearken to their Lord, listen to what their Lord says, the first step. Kiam, this first position. Kiam, Yaw Malik Kiam, the day of standing, who establish or stand up the Salat. Akimu, the Ikama, but Abba to Salat, you stand. So this Akimu Salat, it translates as establish, stand it up. Establish it. Make it a regular thing. Those who establish Salat and conduct their affairs by mutual consultation, seeking advice of a particular issue that will affect the community. You don't just arbitrarily make the decision. You seek wisdom from others. And that can be an ongoing thing. Leadership should always be seeking advice because none of us know it all. And who spend what razak. Razak is the substance. Women women razak na hum yunfikun who spend of the provisions that Allah has given them. Now this is said in Baqarah, it's said often, to spend of your provisions. Now, this word here, yunfikun, is important, that's spending. But you ever heard of munafikun? A munafikun are the hypocrites. But it's used here, yunfikun, the, the root, nafik, uh, Yunafikun is translated as to spend. But if you put the M on it, it's Munafikun, the hypocrite. Because the hypocrite spends his lies, his words, his money to hurt and to deceive people. So what Allah says is the Munafik. So you are to spend just as hard and harder than the monafi of the provisions that I've given you, but you are to spend it for the benefit of humanity, for the benefit of the religion. So those who spend the provisions that Allah gave you, what Allah gave you, was the hypocrite to spend what he got from Allah, and whatever he was able to steal out your pocket, you'll spend that as well to deceive the believers in the world. So here this, this is together with Shura. And this is why in the, the Shura Bainahum, equal consultation, each person's opinion is to be respected. And you seek advice on a particular issue. Issue comes, you have sure. You consult, so you get the best ideals, the best approach. So that's what this is named after. After this ayat. We want to go straight to that. Because that's what Islam is about. That's what Islam is about trying to do the best, trying to achieve the best. And none of us, Imam, Sheikh, or whatever we are, Uli man, we don't know it all. So we ought to consult, have sure, and keep it moving. Issue comes up, seek advice, see what it is, consult, and keep it moving. 
So, praise be to Allah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. This surah begins in surah chapter 42. It begins, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And as we know last week, uh, we were into last week's, which was Fusilat, and some call it Hamim. There's a series of Hamim. They start out with the H and the M, as an Ayat. So here, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Hamim. And remember what we always say, after that, after these letters, there's usually something said about the Quran, 99% of the time. So they're attention grabbers. What does that mean? Hamim. When the prophet came in the time of darkness. And even now when we read it, what does that mean? So if they grab your attention, Hamim. One ayat. The second ayat, and this one says, Ain seen off. Three more abbreviated letters. So there's five abbreviated letters. The first ayat, Hamim, H and M, hard H. Then Ain, a hard A. Ain, Sin, soft S. Off. One ayat, two ayat. Then what it says, Kedalika, you. Thus, did he send down the inspiration, that's the Quran, the inspiration to you as he did to those before you. Establishing early that what Muhammad the Prophet was receiving was the same of what the other prophets received. That it was no new thing. That it was a continuation. It was a continuation of what Moses had received. Jesus had received. Abraham had received. So Allah says, what he is sent down by inspiration, wahi, wahi, inspired, to Muhammad is what he sent down before you, to those before you. Allahu Azizul Hakim. And Allah is the mighty, the wise. Now we've been hearing that a lot in each of these surahs, right? Aziz. Aziz. The mighty. Azizul Hakim. Azizul Alim. He's the mighty, strong. But he's also the wise. The all-knowing. To him belongs whatever is in the sky, the heavens, and whatever is in the earth belongs to Allah. See how he starts it out, sets the tone. Hamim, what's that? What's these letters? Well, just pay a little more attention, you'll get it. It's Allah. See, so this is the revelation that we gave to Muhammad, just like we gave to the others. And your Lord, now, now we have to put ourselves there a little bit. In the past, it's a time of darkness, total ignorance in Arabia. And Muhammad the Prophet growing up among those pagans who thought they knew something, but were really in the dark. That this revelation is coming to them and they're worshiping 300 some odd idols as gods. And here comes his revelation and it says, no, we inspired this one. One from among you. A common person, a trustworthy one. And we inspired him to say that the creator of the heavens and the earth is the mighty, he's the wise. And to him, the one God, Tarid, concept Tarid. To him belongs everything. Even your little 
idol gods. Whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. And it says, Wahua Elion Adin. And here's, a, here's another, here's more attributes. Ali. We have Ali, right? So my name, Ali. Right? Ali, the Most High. Ali. He is the Most High. And El Alim. So mighty. You know, when we go in Ruku, we put our hands on our knees, right? And we say, Subhana Rebbel Al Alim. Glory to our Lord, the mighty. So he's letting us know he's the mighty. And when we go into Sajda, when we're in the lowest position, we say, Subhana Rebbel Al we're in the lowest position, and we say glory to our Lord, the Most High. See, that's when we mention Ali. When we're in the lowest position in such a, we say, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Glory to my Lord, the Most High. I'm down low, and I'm acknowledging that you are the Most High. So Allah brings that here. And then in, in, in a Surah Allah, the chapter called Allah, Says, "Set be his me right be kala ala." That's what and 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 so when we're in that position, we glorify Allah as the Most High. So Allah just reminding it starts out reminding us who He is, <laughs> and then it says the heavens are almost burst asunder, split. From above them by his glory and the angels celebrate the praises of their Lord and pray for forgiveness for all beings on earth behold verily Allah is he the all forgiving the most merciful now this is Quran this is Quran. Well, Allah says in their praise, it almost splits. They pray so much. And the angels, they celebrate the praise of their Lord. And they pray for forgiveness for every human being on this earth. And we need forgiveness. And it says, now do they pray for forgiveness all they pray to the forum Rahim that Allah is most forgiving, most compassionate. So whatever mistakes we make, slips, fall, seek Allah's forgiveness and his mercy. Because he is the most forgiving, the most merciful. That whatever crime, mistakes, Habits we're trying to shape. Seek his forgiveness. Because he's the most forgiving and the most merciful. And is always looking, so to speak, to bestow his grace and his mercy. And to hold back the wrath. Never think that this is just about wrath and being condemned to hell. For every mistake that you make. Allah said in the Quran, and we pointed this out, that if he was to punish us for every mistake that we make, it doesn't just say it wouldn't be a human being left on the earth. It says it wouldn't be a creature left on the earth. Letting us know that the birds, the fish, the ants, the bees, the trees, none of these things are perfect. And they make mistakes in some kind of way because only Allah is perfect. So in his mercy and his compassion, he reminds us in each surah of the Quran, except one, right? And just think of that. It opens up. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. It's no light matter that each chapter 
reminds us that he is not Aziz, not Hakeem, not al fatir but that he is Rahman Rahim. That every chapter opens up with that. That's a message to us that we have a merciful and a compassionate Lord. Except nine. But it is still mentioned 114 times because it is picked up in, I think, 27. In Solomon's letter to Sheba. It starts out, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And why it's not mentioned in nine, we could give a cook by on that. And we touched on it before because we're going to each chapter. But that sort of is called Tauba. Repentance. <laughs> so there you're repenting and the mercy comes as a result of repentance. So let us let us move on. All praises due to Allah. It is so wonderful and we should thank Allah so much to be Muslims and believers. Thank Allah so much. Alhamdulillah. Many a call if you are chosen. So we thank Allah that we were able to hear the call to Islam. And that we are Muslims trying to be upright. And we are blessed with this deen. This is no light matter. Be thankful and grateful that you are a Muslim and a believer. And we try to live this religion the best that we can. And we try to advance and then move it forward for the, our benefit and the benefit of humanity. So, now, here we look in Ayat 7. And we mentioned this last week, but Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ قُرْآنَ أَوْرَبِيَّةِ لِتُنْذِرَ أُمُّ الْقُرَىٰ And that is this. We sent by inspiration the Quran in Arabia. In the Arabia. And we put it out from the Quran where Allah says He gave it in Arabia that you may reason properly. That you may reason. That you may think. Not just to recite or sound good, but it is there to make you think and to reason. But here he says in Arabia that you may warn the mother of cities at the Mecca and all around her and warn them of the day of assembly of which there is no doubt when some will be in the garden and some in the blazing fire. If Allah had so willed, he could have made them a single people could make us a single people but he admits whom he will to his mercy and the wrongdoers will have no protector no helper so let us keep that in mind we close the first part of the kutbah Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatain wa fi akirati hasanatain wa kinada minna alhamdulillah Muslim brothers and sisters, I greet you again. As-salamu alaykum. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We pray that Allah will guide us, protect us, increase us in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And really appreciate being Muslims and believers. And appreciate the Quran, life example of Muhammad the Prophet. And appreciate our Ummah. Appreciate each other. Allah says in the Quran of the believers and the Muslims that we line up as a solid wall. As a solid wall. And protect 
protecting our own mind, protecting our life. Now what Muhammad the Prophet, what he bought was the same as all the other prophets. Allah established that. That he didn't come and bring anything necessarily new. It was new to his people that was in the darkness. But he as, a, as the seal of the prophets and messenger of Allah, he continued the line of what the others had bought. What, he had, what the others had bought. And Allah tells us that here, in the Quran here, in verse 13 of this chapter, he said, the same religion has he established for you as that which he enjoined on Noah. Same thing that he gave Noah. This is verse 13. To which we have sent by inspiration to you and that which we enjoined on Abraham, Moses, and Jesus. And what is that? This is key for us. What is that? Now here in English they say, namely, that you should remain steadfast in religion and make no division therein. Now let's see what it, that's the best of the translation. It's the translation. But let's see what, what the Quran says in the, Arab, in the Arabic here. Some of it. In terms of its purpose, namely. It says, An Akimu Deen. Akimu. That's the term, Kiyam. Akimu Deen. Kiyam. Being upright. Same word. We start out with uh, establishing Salah. Akimi. Standing up like this. First position. Kiyam. Akimu Deen. Being upright in the Deen. That he brought the message as the same prophets bringing it to us, bringing it to humanity. That you come to the deen, but that you be upright in the deen. Strive to be upright in the deen. True and honorable in the deen. And we read here, and it says, and make no division therein, right? No split off in the dean, right? But the word that is used here, listen carefully. La, do not. Tete fauraku. Fauraku. Furqan. Furqan. Allah says that he revealed the Quran as a criteria, right? Furqan is the criteria. It is something that helps you to reason properly. To help you to distinguish between right and wrong. Criteria, right? For the Quran, right? To help you distinguish between right and wrong. Truth and falsehood. Rational things from irrational things, right? That's a criteria to help us to distinguish. So, Allah said he uses that word for division. Meaning, meaning, lie. Don't try to rationalize in any way. Apply the, 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 the rules of logic in any way to justify division. When it says, let there be no division, it uses that word for the Quran, from for the Quran, to say to us believers, don't in any way try to use a criteria from the Quran. The Quran is a criteria to justify division among the Muslims. Don't try to rationalize it. If it's a personal thing, it's a personal thing. If it's some politics, it's some politics. But never try to rationalize it in the deen. That's why it uses for the Quran. And it uses the same word when it says, we make no distinction between the prophets. That they're all the same. So it uses for the Quran. See, over in the English, it just say division. And there's different words that mean to divide. But... But for the Quran is to distinguish. Here's illogical things, here's logical things. Here's truth, here's falsehood. 
So, don't divide yourselves and try to present some kind of rational argument for the division in Islam. But stand up in the deen. Be true in the deen. And if there's a falling out, call it for what it is. But never try to use the Quran to justify and rationalize division among believers. So Allah tried to help us and give us more and let us know. No, no. There will be problems, but don't rationalize it. Don't use the Quran to rationalize our division. And he said, there shouldn't be no division. There shouldn't be no division. And he said, to those who worship other things than Allah, who make partners with Allah, that is a big thing. To which they call on is a big thing. Allah chooses to himself those whom he pleases, and he guides to himself those who turn to him. So Allah, Allah will call whom he pleases to this thing. We don't meet the Muslims. Allah makes the Muslims. And he guides those who turn to him with that repenting heart. This will be a few reminders from the Quran as we move through this. And so that's the best thing we can do. The Quran, life example of Muhammad, the Prophet, Sallallahu And once you know when, we, when we're doing this, when we're coming from the Quran, you know, as we know, Aisha, Radu, Allahu Anha, said Muhammad, the Prophet, Sallallahu was the Quran living, walking, living Quran. And it is the Quran that elevated him from Muhammad to Prophet Muhammad. It is the Quran that changed those backwards people and changed the world and made it progress. And it is the Quran that will change our life and make us achieve the progress that we want and need so bad. But we have to trust it. It's a book of knowledge, the word of God. But we have to believe it and we have to trust it. it might be hard for some of us. We may be trusting in the politics. Trusting in the business. Trusting in the world. But we have to trust the word of Allah in the Quran. And know that it has happened before. And any progress in this world that we see, it is a result of the Quran directly or indirectly. We have to trust it. We have to believe it. If we want to build masjids, schools, businesses, the things that we really need and want, trust in Allah, the Quran. Connect to that and give it the best try that we can. And we know what Allah says of the Quran, that it is the light and it will guide us in the time of darkness and it is bigger than any light in this universe. So let us trust in that. And we've been pushing that a lot. And we have to. Here in Ayah 17, Allah says, Allahu ladhi anzalal kitabah bilhaq wal mizana That it is Allah who has sent down the book in truth. And as a balance, and what will make you realize that perhaps the hour is close at hand. That the Quran is a light. That the Quran is the truth. And it is the balance. And we study the Quran. Allah says, because you don't know that maybe the hour is close at hand. What hour? My hour? Your hour? when we're no longer here. We never know when that's going to come, do we? We don't know when the angel of death is going to be sent to us. Just like none of us here knew when we were going to be born. So, we get the Quran, we try to live the good life and fill that scale with goodness. Because we never know when that hour is going to come, do we? 
God is so beautiful and so nice and has so much wisdom and so many other subtleties. And we want to encourage ourselves to study and read it so much more. So in our next few minutes, and I have so much here, but you know me, so I have to pull it back. <laughs> the signs, the signs. Allah says in Ayat 28, here it is, here's the one that sends down rain and they have in parenthesis, even after men have given up all hope and scatters his mercy, his mercy, far and wide. And he is the protector worthy of all praise. Wahul waliyul hamid. That Allah is the protector, the friend, the protector, and the one worthy of praise. Remember, Allah, this is the words of the Quran. Is our protector, our provider, and our protector will protect your life, my life, our community life. Allah is the true protector and the one worthy of praise. And he says, among his signs is this. Among his signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the living creatures that he has scattered through them. And he has power to gather them together when he will. And then it says in the next, in the Ayat 32, and we're trying to get somewhere and we're almost there. In Ayat 32 in this chapter. He says, وَمِنْ أَيَاتِهِ الْجَوَارِ فِي الْبَحْرِ كَالْأَحْلَمْ أَحْلَمْ And that says this, and among his signs are the ships, are the ships. We picture the ships out on the ocean, right? Are the ships running smoothly through the ocean. And they put, in English translation, tall as mountains. So we picture the ships on the ocean, right? And the sails coming to a point. Look like mountains. That's the translation. But here, there's nothing here that says Jabal, mountain. It says, Wa min ayati hill, jawari fil bahri kal ahlam. The word that is used is ilm. And they translate it mountain. Ahlam. You see a ship sitting there on the ocean protruding, right? And here it says sitting there as mountains but the word is ilm, knowledge because the ships that were made then and now it took knowledge it took wisdom to be able to construct these ships and move on a large ocean so Allah said you see them moving smoothly because they develop a certain amount of knowledge. But, he says, if it be his will, if it is Allah's will, then would they become motionless. They couldn't even move. They become motionless on the back of the ocean. Verily in this are signs for everyone who patiently perseveres and is grateful. And we see the ships moving, right? Just think of this. Life. You're moving through life. Moving on the water, right? Because of the winds. Because of Allah. Because the wind's moving. Allah says he could stop the wind. And just leave them sitting there motionless. Can't get back home. Or he could cause them to perish. Just, you don't see him no more, right? But 
they say this is a sign that they move, they moving. We moving through life, right? Smoothly. But Allah could stop the wind from blowing and just leave them fixed right there. Or he can cause it to perish. In our life, we move and we may just take things for granted, right? Just going about our business. But know that Allah could stop everything he provides for us and just leave us fixed in our situation. So he says, and that is a sign for those that are patient and grateful. Things may not come as fast as we want them to come. But we be patient, right? And constantly persevere. And often be grateful to Allah for what we do have. Be grateful for what Allah has given us. Whatever little we may think it is. If we wake up and we see another day. And we say, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. I can do something else. Be thankful for the small things. Be thankful for the small things. So dear believers, Allah says whatever you are given in this life is but a convenience of this life. But that which is with Allah is better and more lasting. It is for those who believe and put their trust in their Lord. Those who avoid the greater crimes and shameful deeds, and when they are angry, and we have to conclude on this, when they are angry, even then, they forgive. Even then, Allah teaches us and disciplines us that's why we say, really attached to the words of the Quran. That what we have is the conveyance of this life. And we subscribe as we pray. Give us the excellence, oh our Lord, give us the excellence in this life, right? And give us the excellence of the next life. And protect us against the torment of the heaven. So we should go after these things that we need to live in the dunya, right? The businesses, the this, the that. But Allah says these things are given to us as a convenience in this world. And let us keep that perspective, strive to. He said, but the best, alhamdulillah, he said the best and more lasting for those who believe for the movement is with Allah. Put your trust in Allah. Let us put our trust and our faith in Allah. And we try to avoid the major sins. And we try to control anger. Now that's, that's strong. Only Allah could put that that way. That even when you angry, rage, he did me wrong. She did me wrong. Say, so even then, even then, yakfirun gafura, even then, be forgiven. Brothers and sisters, we focus on this. This will help us as individuals, myself included, on this human plane. <laughs> I read that. I said, boy, can you do that, Mustafa? <laughs> You have to try. That's what the Quran say. Even when you're angry. Now we that's on the human level, right? But Allah say, even when you're angry, try to forgive. So, you know, we hold grudges for 50 years. <laughs> Self-included. I might still be mad at my wife. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> stop for a while. I have to stop now. Because this is Juma. We keep it quiet. And I get a little humor going. So like, brother, your mom, it's time to go. Don't start that comedian stuff. When it's over, we can laugh. So praise be to Allah. So 
Even when we're angry, let us try to forgive. This, we pray Allah, was cooked by our whole Ummah, as it should be. And it's tied in because the, the chapter is called the Shura. Shura. Shura Bainam. Neutral consultation. So praise be to Allah. We pray that we've been able to say something that will benefit us in some way. And we pray that Allah will guide us and protect us. And we close. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatain. Wa fi akirati hasanatain. Wa kinaya dhabbana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.